Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, listen, friends, uh, we have just, I, I have to thank uh, Brother Chavar, who sent me uh, not this particular video, but uh, I'll bring up the video I brought in a second. But this is uh, uh, in Israel. Hey, hey, Steve. Hang on one second, brother. Uh, that we're in Israel right here, and what's going on is uh, you're looking at scenes of uh, uh, some Jewish people running the, in Demona. The uh, the in Demona, we the the nuclear where the nuclear reactor is for Israel uh, has come under attack, and uh, Robert Inlach Kesh also uh, putting up some video footage there of this happening. Uh, there is some early reports that a drone was flew over there by Hezbollah. And uh, and you can see in the video footage right here on your screen here, uh, they're showing you from different webcams in Israel, the very large explosion. Uh, Israel's um, uh, defense shield also was activated uh, as well. Right now, no other, nothing else has been reported on this. But I do have on the line with us Gary Lowry, Brother Gary Lowry out of California. And I have to tell you, friends, as soon as I saw this report, uh, I have been waiting for this for years because Brother Gary and myself, we've, we've talked about this, uh, this Demona incident that was going to be coming because God had showed him in a dream. He also spoke to him uh, years ago, told him uh, to tell his wife that this was going to happen. And now we're seeing this happen right now. Brother Gary, thank you uh, for joining me here tonight on Israeli News Live. I'm glad to be here with you, Steve. Thank you, Brother Gary. And uh, and I'll tell you something, Brother Gary, if you can, I mean, we've been friends for many years. I mean, since, gosh, I guess, Brother Gary, since I started ministry practically, uh, yeah. we've been friends and, and we've stayed in touch, of course, not on my part. I'm really bad. You know, I am. I'm bad about getting back with people. Just don't tell nobody that, though, Brother Gary. So, but anyway, <laughs> so, but you know, I, I'll say that I want I want the people that are listening. One thing I'd like for you guys to know about Brother Gary that I know personally because of all the years we've been friends. Uh, and by the way, this is his YouTube channel right here, Bear O Forty Nine. Uh, Brother Gary has has some very uh, profound prophetic dreams over the years in so much that at one point there was an issue going on with Syria and really Gary had had a dream about it and he actually named an individual that he saw in one of the meetings that was going on I think it was with the Israelis a secret meeting they were having and and he knew that there was a risk that Israel would be facing from Syria from rockets that were over in Syria uh, and he asked me to relay that information over to the Israeli uh, government because of the contacts I had there. And I did. And it actually shocked them because they said he shouldn't have known the name of the individual. Uh, and so they wanted to know about his dream specifically because of that. So, you know, I, I can tell you from experience uh, that a lot of things that the Lord has shown him, he's one of the very few people that, that I really appreciate when God gives him a dream or something, I actually take notice of it. And Brother Gary said, this is going to be another one that God has shown you, and we're seeing it come to pass. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I can. Uh, I had these. Uh, well, first, I I had a dream. I can't remember the order, whether it was the dream first or the word from the Lord, but I <clears throat> had a word from the Lord, and he told me that the Demona, the nuclear facility would be attacked by Iran. And then he also said, and the city of Demona itself will be attacked. And uh, he told me to tell my wife so that it would give proof to her that I, that God himself was speaking to me. And then I had a, a second dream at some point about Demona, and I, uh, this first thing was God speaking to me while I was asleep. His, his voice was speaking to me, and he told me this, and I wrote it down. He told me to, to write it down and to tell my wife about it. And then I had another dream, and I saw this nuclear power plant, and, and, uh, in this dream, this plant was hit 
by uh, some type of attack, and it was, um, I think it was on fire. I may have made a video about this. I'm not sure. I, I know I wrote it down, and I can remember seeing this facility. I was looking at it from a building, and I could see the the cooling, the, the main dome with the cooling tower next to it. I could see that, uh, that there was something wrong with that area of this nuclear power plant. And so that's basically what happened. Amen. With those two things. And the Lord had told me that. And, you know, remember the Lord told me, <clears throat> and I told you too at the time that the Lord had told me that, that they would make these, uh, missiles that were more accurate. They were able to hit even Jerusalem. And at the time, people said there's no way they can hit Jerusalem from where they are. You know, and I saw these Hezbollah guys with these rockets and on the side of them, the rocket said 202 on the side of the rocket. And uh, they were able to hit the city. A bunch of other, the Lord used to deal with me quite a bit about Israel. I saw, you know, those Israeli, uh, look like rabbis in an underground facility. And, and I told you about this too, about them having this weapon that nobody else has. That's right. And you I, did, Brother Gary. And, and you know, it's interesting to confirm uh, what you're saying about the Iranians and their technology, and uh, which they didn't have at the time. Uh, I had gotten information from Iran uh, the, that they had a technology that Israel and the United States could not mitigate. And, and of course, through, through my contacts in the uh, Pentagon, they had confirmed as well there was a technology that they could not mitigate. Well, that technology, Brother Gary, ended up being that there was something on their missiles that the Patriot or neither the David Sling could detect an incoming missile. And so therefore, it made it virtually impossible for them to stop those missiles from coming in. And, uh, and this is something no one wanted to admit. And when I reported it, I, I guess it, it took almost a year before finally the Israeli government, and it was actually the defense minister of Israel, that actually came out and said that they have that technology. Well, back when Trump was president last year, uh, I knew that there was a very high probability that he was going to go to war with Iran. And the reason he was going to go to war with Iran was because Iran already had nuclear weapons. And he wanted to try to stop them from being able to use what they do have. We know Israel says that they're trying to keep them from getting them, but even the Israelis know they have them. That's been confirmed to me by one friend in Mossad. The other one is an Israeli journalist. Both of them know that it's true. Um, but at the same point, though, the same the reason why I want to say this, though, when I was getting back to this issue of December of last year, was I'd gotten a report in from uh, from friends there that have very close contacts in Iran intelligence that the Iranians had given their ballistic missiles and their latest technology over to Hezbollah. They'd given it over to many of their allies, even including the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Uh, so I can see then why, the if, if this is Hezbollah that has actually done this attack on Demona, you know, they've been given it. I mean, so in reality, it's still Iran giving them the capability to do what they're doing. Brother Gary, your thoughts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, my, that's that's what I was thinking. I saw these two men <clears throat> in this dream, and they had this. The rocket was a green color, and it had white letters or yellow letters that said 202 on the side of it. And it was a pretty large rocket. And the Lord was telling me that they had the capability to strike Jerusalem with that. And it was some new ability that they didn't have before. And, um, <clears throat> you know, what I was thinking about, too, when you're talking about this and your proof of whether uh, the Iranians have a nuclear weapon, we know from government reports that uh, there were neutron triggers initiated. We have satellites and they're ostensibly in the beginning they were to detect um, stars when they collapsed the neutron emissions from stars and they began to detect neutron emissions way more than what they uh, scientists had said well they, statistically there should be this amount of neutron emissions with 
a certain amount of stars collapsing, but what they found was it was happening a lot more regularly. So they began to search the skies and they didn't see any light or anything from those areas where they would think, you know, this neutron emission came from. So they began to look towards the earth and what they were detecting were uh, Russian detonations of nuclear weapons and tests of neutron triggers. And so the United States government knows that in, I believe it's in the Perchin facility or Nance, one of those, they, they detected, I think it was five neutron trigger detonations and a neutron trigger so that people know to initiate a nuclear explosion, you have to initiate a cas- a neutron cascade in the weapons uh, stockpile, whatever it is, like if it's 235 or plutonium, there's usually, almost always, there is a neutron trigger initiation that causes the beginning of the cascade and then the detonation that compresses the material down. You know, there are gun types which use a compression also, but there's always this neutron trigger. And so our government has tracked that there was neutron triggers being fired. And they're very rare. You cannot get them. They're a controlled device. So somebody's given the Iranians the, the, those devices and allowed them to test it. What they're doing is they're testing the configuration of this bomb to see how it works, see what happens when it does the implosion, and, and they're te- doing the timing for all this stuff. You would think the Russians could just give them all this material or China or whoever it is, but they may want to be able to deny it, it was that they had any involvement in it, you know, and so they allow these guys to experiment with it and figure out how to do it themselves so that when they, they do use one of these, say, on an American city or on, on an Israeli city, which I saw, the Lord showed me that Tel Aviv got hit by a nuclear, what it looked like to me was a nuclear weapon. It came in through that Haifa area. It was some type of a drone type thing wow. because it turned as it came in. I saw the seaport and everything. Well, you know, that was that was about five years ago. Brother Gary, that's another interesting point right there as well. So I'll just kind of share with you that uh, uh, the friend that I have that his family is uh, part of the Mossad. In fact, his father in law is one of the early founders of the Mossad organization uh, had shared with me back um, earlier this year. A lot of the people in the intelligence community, he lives up in Netanya, which is just just basically the outskirts of Tel Aviv on the northern side there. Uh, And this is where Shin Bet and Mossad headquarters are. Well, a lot of the people that are there have been coming in and moving out because they know that this will be where Iran would target. And uh, and, and it's interesting because when he when when he when he wrote me, Chris said, he goes, well, Steve, he said, all right. He said, we don't have to argue the issue. We know that Iran has nukes. And that's where they're going to that's what they're going to use when they hit us here. He said, so I guess I'll just become toast. Uh, he said either that or I need to get out now while everybody else is getting out. So they are fully anticipating this is going to happen. And uh, and, you know, so so it's just it's just headed there. Brother Gary, let's take if we would. Another thing that the Lord has shown you shown you on before as well. And I'm going to kind of just go ahead and navigate people over here. Uh, Vladimir Putin. And uh, in fact, the one friend that I have uh, up in D.C. worked as a diplomat in Russia. Uh, he knows Putin personally. Uh, uh, he worked there back in the days when Putin was more uh, aggressive uh, under Yeltsin at the time. And uh, But he said that he believes that there's some type of transformation has happened to Putin over the years. He said, noticeably so, he said, because he was like an arch enemy of his back when uh, they were dealing with the Cold War, things like that. But uh, he said Putin has really been very, um, as he put it, he's been really holding back. And he told me just recently that there's a lot of, he's under a lot of pressure of taking on America, uh, which to me it's all part of the New World Order agenda anyway. So Putin may be just playing right in, he may be playing the cards the way the rest of them play it. But nonetheless, uh, today, an uh, article came out on um uh, the Business Insider, and it states here, Russian President Vladimir Putin in an annual address on Wednesday warned any adversaries who crosses Russia's red line 
they will face any asymmetric, fast, and tough response. So the organizers of any provocation threatening the fundamental interest of our security will regret their deeds more than they have regretted anything in a long time. And Putin said, per the New York Times, I hope no one gets the idea to cross the so-called red line with Russia, and we will be on be one of the ones to decide where it runs in every concrete case. Uh, it says some more things, but I'll skip that. Brother Gary, I, I don't know if you've uh, caught when this before this began to build up before Russia and Ukraine even moved the first set of troops on this latest issue. I had actually got, uh, I won't say how I got it. I have to be careful about that. But it was it was sent to me immediately that Biden had met with the Ukrainian government and he wanted, he made a deal with the Ukrainian government to send their troops to Crimea and the Donbass region and make it appear in the public eye that they're going to take back their territory. And that they're going to basically say that Russia is being aggressive and Ukraine has to do this. But he said to me, it's not the case, Steve. He said Biden had made a lucrative deal with the Ukrainian government. If they can cause enough pressure on Russia to drop the Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline from going through there and use the uh, U.S. pipeline instead. Uh, he said, so you're going to see a lot of propaganda. He said, and you're going to see a lot of troop movements start taking place. Now, I reported this uh, about a month ago now, Brother Gary, and everything that I was told is actually really we're seeing it. And they are putting it as if Russia is the one that started everything. But I know that they didn't actually start it. But nonetheless, we are where we are now. Uh, I know that the... Uh, the Vilna of Goan, the Israeli rabbi from the, uh, I think this, what, the 17th century, he had always said that Russia would would take Crimea, uh, that Russia would also uh, invade Ukraine, and that this would lead to the Gog of Magog War. Uh, I, I personally believe that, and, and it's mainly because I've studied a lot of the Vilna of Goan's writings, that they're trying to fit the world events to fit the narrative that he laid out for the coming of the Messiah, which in this case we know would be the Antichrist because Jesus Christ is the only Messiah that there ever will be. And this is what Israel needs to see today. They need to recognize that Jesus Christ truly was the Messiah uh, in order to, 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 to complete the redemptive process for them. Uh, but anyway, can you kind of share some things that you know about the issue with Ukraine and Russia? Yes, I had a, uh... I had a dream. I made a video about this also. I dreamed that I was in front of my computer and I was looking up, I was just looking at like YouTube stuff, you know, people, different people's channels and things like that. And then across my screen, it flashed an alert and it had like a red header bar. And it said that it was either 2300 or 3200. I can't remember the numbers may be reversed. Uh, NATO forces were killed in some type of action with Russia, and it seemed like it was like a tactical nuclear strike or something like that, and it was in in these areas that are of interest right now. In Ukraine, on the edge, uh, it's part of Russia. You know, they're, they were, I guess they're, they're trying to bring back uh, the Soviet Union, you know, and, and bring back those lands that were one time belonged to this whole federation. So what I saw was, you know, there was a great loss of life. And uh, it's in these areas that, you know, at that time there wasn't a lot of stuff going on when I had this dream with, with Russia and Ukraine. And then and then it just started slowly building. Like you said, they, they came in and took Crimea uh, and uh, <clears throat> President Obama did not do anything to stop that, in fact, you know, they they were, like you're saying, they're trying to make some kind of deal to further their own financial ends. And I believe they were, you know, they're walking this tightrope between triggering war, you know. And, and not only has Putin talked about uh, his response, I mean, he said this many times. You can watch Russian television where he's talking to the Senate, to the Russian people there in Russia, and he's talking about, uh, taking a hard line stance, you know, and I think he was 
afraid of what Donald Trump might do because Donald Trump, you know, is a loose cannon and who knows what he might do. And now he's dealing with somebody that's very weak. And you can see that in not only in, in uh, Biden falling down when he's trying to board the plane, but also when he was at Arlington and he was walking, he and when he walks away from the camera, and when he has news meetings, he looks like a very frail old man. And, you know, there was uh, people talking about when Khrushchev was putting missiles in Cuba and he looked at President Kennedy as being, as being a very weak president. And so when you have a wolf and it's sizing you up, or a bear in this case, and it's sizing you up, you know, and it feels like you are weak. It could it could provoke them to attack you at this weakest position. And if you look at what's happened to the United States with COVID, and then now we have the AOC, which has taken over, basically controlling Bernie Sanders, and, and we've got uh, Biden and Kamala. Those people are very weak, and they're, every day they're running down the United States in front of the people of this country on TV and they're saying that uh, the entire country is systemic racism and all these terrible things about us and how terrible we are. And I think Russia, Putin, especially because he, like you said, he's a KGB agent. He's killed people personally. And uh, this man doesn't take prisoners, you know, and he sees a very frail, weak old man. That's the head of the United States who may blink. You know, if you watch the movie The Shootist with John Wayne in it, and he's being interviewed about how he killed so many men, and he said, well, you know, some men will take a breath before they reach for their gun, or they'll pause in some way, and he says, I don't. And that's what we have here. We have somebody, they're building up the Russian military, this this satellite photographs of a huge buildup of planes and materials. They've uh, revamped those bases that are up in the Arctic area. They're doing patrols near the United States. You know, those uh, Tu-95 Russian bear bombers that are propeller-driven, those things carry numerous, numerous um, cruise missiles, and those cruise missiles can be nuclear-tipped. And that's what I saw in that dream when I saw San Francisco being hit by that EMP, and then there was a nuclear strike against the city, the port area. Those were cruise missiles that came in, and my eyes zoomed in on the tail fin of them, and they had the Russian flag on, which at the time I was thinking, no, the Russian flag is this red flag, you know, and it's not. It's it's white, red, and blue. And so, right. They, they actually changed the color of their flag. It's, it's right. white, white, blue, and red. Exactly. Right. And so I didn't know that. You know, I was thinking, who is that flag? So I, I began to look up that flag, and it's, it's Russian. So... And those were cruise missiles that came in, and that would be the perfect thing. You could. We only have, uh, I think, our aerial defense system for the United States. There's there's a small battery over uh, on in there in California, and then you don't have anything else, you know. And so uh, those things are equipped to shoot down continental intercontinental ballistic missiles, not short range uh, cruise missiles with a nuclear tip on them. It'd be almost virtually impossible to stop those things. And that's, that's the thing that I think about. Like we have this weak president, all these things are building up. And then, you know, he challenged, uh, Putin challenged Biden to a debate, a public debate. You know, he would just, he'd eviscerate him because he's so weak. And he, half the time he doesn't even know what he's doing or what documents he's signing or who he's talking to or what they're doing. You know, he forgets the names of things. So it's, it's not when we had Donald Trump in there, he never made mistakes like that. He said a lot of crazy stuff. He was very boisterous. He said a lot of things that many Christians believe or wish that he wouldn't have said, but you know, at least he was a strong president and a strong figure that a lot of people in the world feared and he had he was doing all these things, you know, that seemed to be working and he was really working for Israel, you know, trying to bring the capital to Jerusalem like was promised for years and do some of these other things that have been neglected and you know we see what that got him yeah and what's really bad when it comes to that right there uh, with Israel because he did Trump gave everything to Israel that they wanted uh, and at the end of the day Netanyahu turned his back on him and and in reality they're the ones that actually caused him to to lose this election 
Uh, and of course, through being rigged, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't rigged. Uh, but anyway, Brother Gary, I really appreciate you coming on, brother. Uh, if you would stay, stay on the line with me for a moment here, I'm gonna we're gonna close this out. Uh, listen, those of you that don't know Brother Gary, like I said, his YouTube channel here, Bear 049. Uh, it just really is a really good brother, very solid, and I really, I, I can't tell you how much I love this brother. I, I really do. And uh, Brother Gary, I, you you mean the world to me, and I appreciate you taking the time to come on. And uh, and I'm glad I caught you. So, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you guys for listening to the broadcast tonight. And uh, don't forget uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. Uh, and Brother Gary, do you actually have a website as well, or just your YouTube channel? You know, the only one I have is I have that Terran 52, which is the that alien site that has pictures of the aliens and a little story that I tell about what happened with the uh, fallen angels. How, how do I spell that? How do I spell that, brother? Your your website. It, I think it's just uh, T E R R A N fifty two. I think is what it is. It's a. Uh, they can just type my name in a lot of times and uh, put the word alien next to my name or abduction next to my name, and and it'll bring up that site. It's also on my web page. There's a little bear symbol that looks like a bear on a tree. Okay. If you click on that, it will take you to that website, and you can look at look at those pictures that I did. And I have photographs of the various creatures on there too. If people want to look at those, all right, I got some it. of them. Not all. I have I have a bunch of videotape of them. But okay, yeah, Taren Taren fifty two dot wordpress dot com. Uh, I do yep. want to get you on, brother Gary. And I know we've said this for years, as you point out to me, and I always forget to get back with you on this. My wife is really one wanting to interview you about this because but Gary did go through an abduction uh, a long time ago, and it is a very profound story. And Brother Gary, like myself, he, he knows what Nephilim are. And I know the one thing that's always stuck in my mind, Brother Gary, is when you shared with me uh, that one thing that you remembered was them apologizing, saying, we know we did wrong, we're sorry. Uh, yeah, you know, and it just it tells you they <laughs> you're dealing with fallen angels, right? And right. like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Anyway, God bless yeah. you guys for 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 listening tonight, and uh, we'll update you. I was actually going to do a teaching tonight on the book of Hebrews, but I'll I'll wait till tomorrow because the story that was breaking, I, I really wanted to get to it. And and I and the teaching, brother Gary, I'll just share with you real quick too, and the listeners, it is. I actually have an old ancient document of the book of Hebrews in the Hebrew language. And so that's what I'll be sharing with everybody. So anyway. Oh, yeah, that's great. Thank you for listening, friends. Good evening.